First um, a visit in the Polish school in, in Scotland. It is my first visit to the Polish school. Um, I've got responsibility for education, you know, from cradle to grave, really. Um, but I had heard about the school, but I hadn't had a chance to come and see it. So I'm glad I've taken that opportunity. Right. And after hearing all the arguments about how many Poles are here and how important is the Polish, Polish language, would you would you consider doing any actions, like taking any actions to put Polish language in this curriculum? Well, there's been a lot of discussion about how we can help the community and how we can take the language forward. And I think now that we're getting to grips with some of the possibilities as well as the problems, making sure that teachers can get registered to teach because we have compulsory registration in Scotland and we're, we're very, very serious about it. Uh, but making sure that uh, people who are suitably qualified can get to teach. I think we've got to look at qualifications. Now, we don't expand those you know, regularly. We have to see demand and we have to make sure that teachers are available. But I'm, I'm absolutely sure we can make progress on those areas. Uh, we've been talking about them for a while. I understand more about them now. We have independent bodies that make some of those decisions. Scottish education isn't entirely run by me. There are other people involved in making those decisions. But I do want to see that progress made and what I've seen here today makes me think that we should get a move on. Yes, of course. Do you think the wave of Polish immigrants who came after 2006 was more beneficial for Great Britain or was it? I think, I think migration is beneficial for Scotland. I thought that all my life. There's a Scottish writer called William McIlvanny who talks about Scotland as a mongrel nation. And essentially that richness that comes from people coming into the country and Scots going elsewhere is incredibly positive. Um, you know, Scotland is a small country with quite a reasonably sized land area. It's not full up. You know, and we don't have always the full complement of skills and abilities that we need. So. People coming to stay here, people contributing to society, people choosing to make it their home is a very positive thing. Just as Scots, you know, for generations, for hundreds of years, have gone to Poland and done exactly the same. Now, you know, it would be very rude of us to say, well, we can go to Poland and settle there, but you can't come here. There's a great benefit to both sides. And the countries, in a curious way, have, you know, seen similarities in each other and been comfortable about going and living, you know, and find that productive. So I just want to encourage it. I mean, I, I don't, far from it being a problem, I think it's a benefit. Uh, considering the fact that there are so many children who's got mixed uh, uh, parents, right? One Polish, one Scottish. There's a special generation growing up who will be fluent in Polish and, and, and English. Yes. And would you consider um, creating some new opportunities for them? Like they could be perfect communicators between the nations in all sectors. Well, I think those opportunities present themselves, you know, in things like business and industry. You know, if, if companies in Scotland wanting to work in Poland will be able to employ wonderfully qualified people who will speak both languages and know both cultures. It's not just language always, it's, it's culture as well. Uh, teachers that have both languages are an inspiration, even if they only teach one language are an inspiration because they know the benefits of bilingualism. Uh, uh, you know, in Scotland, I hope, becoming an independent country, there are opportunities in terms of the European Union. You know, if you ever attend, and I'm a minister's attended, Council of Ministers on many occasions, you need people who can translate and understand the nuances. So we'll be able to take with us uh, translators who can translate uh, Scottish um, uh, uh, ministers into Polish and we'll be able to take people who will help us to understand what the Polish ministers are saying. That's great. And who knows, ministers might even uh, be people who can speak both languages because, you know, the opportunities in Scotland are great and some of the children I've seen today might well end up in my job. Mm -hmm. And continuing the subject of independence referendum, 
Polish people are not uh, sure what's going to happen with them if the Scotland gets independent, <coughs> because uh, the European Union already said that uh, it's not going to be automatically transferred and Scotland will not be in the European Union. Uh, well, the European will Union hasn't said that. That's quite important, right? Um, and there's an opportunity for those who don't want to change to take place, to always use this information to make people wait. Mm -hmm. I want to make an absolutely clear and unequivocal guarantee that the people from Poland who are here are not only welcome, but I hope there'll be more of them. There is no risk to them, and no risk to <coughs> having to go elsewhere or leave elsewhere. I think the European argument is is one. I think even the House of Commons you know, committee that is, doesn't want independence has admitted that Scotland will be part of the European Union. Scotland will be part of the European Union. So there is no threat whatsoever. But the positive nature of our engagement with the Polish community and every other community should, I hope, reassure them that not only will they be entitled to be here, they will be welcome to be here. And how would you, how would you encourage them to, to vote yes? I think, well, I would, I would start by saying, is, do they think that Poland should be joined to any other country and, and run from somewhere else? If the argument to that is no, then it follows automatically that Scotland should be supported in its, its attempt at, uh, and, and desire for self-determination. It is a normal thing. There are 196 independent countries in the world, of which Poland is one. Why should Scotland be uniquely different that it cannot actually run its own affairs? Indeed, people from Poland have come here who see you know, the wealth of Scotland, who see the talent in Scotland, who like living here. You know, I think come to look at this and say, the strange thing is that it hasn't happened already. You know, I find that whenever I travel throughout the world, countries say, people in every country say, why haven't you done it? Because that's what everybody else does. So I think standing back from the scaremongering and people who don't want the change and looking at what the change will bring and the positive things it will bring and the normal nature of what we're talking about should encourage every single member of the community to vote yes. Okay. Um, and have you ever been in Poland? I have it? Yes. And that is what I would like to do. I have, my brother lived in Warsaw for a year. Um, uh, I have a younger brother who travels a, a, a lot and moved to the European Union and loved it. I, uh, I would like to go and visit and um, maybe I'll get the chance to. Right. Uh, do you have any Polish friends here? I have some Polish friends here and I've known uh, people from Poland really all my working life in a variety of different ways. I've um, worked with people in television who are Polish who've worked in a variety of roles. Now the time is for me to go. Exactly. Somebody just has to ask me. Yes. Thank you very much for the <laughs> conversation. It was lovely. Thank Thanks. you. Cheers.